What's up, YouTube? This is your girl, Samantha Sweets, and welcome back to my channel. My channel. Hey, sweetie squad, what is up, my lovies? Happy Saturday. Guys, okay. I, there's a lot that we need to talk about. A lot. But I know that you guys have been seeing that I've been posting today. So I know you guys are all here for what? Crime Stories with Samantha Sweets. And do I have one for y'all today? But before we get into that, if you guys are new to my YouTube channel, what's up? I'm your girl Samantha Sweets. Please make sure you hit the subscription below. Give it a click right here. Ring a ding, ding, ding that bell. Turn your post notifications on. Why? Because I'm doing giveaways, baby. Back to back to back. Boom! All of 2019. Let's go. And if you like me, love me, kiss and kiss. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Guys, I did my makeup a little differently today. Honestly, I was going for like this like burgundy kind of look. I don't know. It was like to match my ears. So uh, if you guys want to see a <laughs> video on that, please let me know in the comments down below. If you guys are wondering what's on my lips, yes, your girl is shining. I have on the Sephora Lip Color Stories in Hong Kong by Night. Yeah, Hong Kong by Night, and I have on the Tarte Lip Gloss H2O in the color, tell me the color, Thai, Thai, I guess, I don't freaking know. It's really pretty, it has like little flamingos on it, it's sparkly, I really like it, I think it's going to be perfect for the holidays coming up, I just decided just to, whatever, throw something on. Alright, so, the crime story I have for you guys today is the love triangle, okay, between... Two females, and of course, what are you fighting over? A man. Oh boy. And I have a story just like that. So if you guys would like to see and hear more of that story, either I'm going to connect it to this or I might just do a separate video. But this video is very near and dear to my heart. I am from South Florida. This is from South Florida, and this happened in 2009. Um, you know, woof, 10 years. And I just feel like... I don't know how I feel about it honestly because I was in these girls positions luckily for me I pushed back and I got away before it got to this disaster honestly another thing is is that this only lasted eight months I think the most maybe nine it didn't even make it to a year before tragedy struck but for me I dealt with it for eight years yeah er yeah, we'll say eight, yeah. We'll say eight and then we'll say off and on seven. That's how long I dealt with it. So you guys wanna hear my story, like I said, I will put that in. But let's get on to this story. This story is about Miss Rachel Wade, who was 19 at the time, Sarah Ludman, who was 17 at the time, oh no, I'm sorry, 18 at the time, girl, hold on. I'm nervous, I'm nervous for y'all, I'm nervous for y'all. Okay, and uh, Josh Camacho, who was 19, uh, 19? Yes, 19 as well. Okay, Samantha, we got this. They live in Pinellas Park County, Florida, and they, you know, the girls, they lived blocks apart from each other. They went to the same school. They hung around the same circles, but lo and behold, they were complete opposite girls. You had Rachel Wade, who was the blonde bombshell. Every guy wanted to be with her, and every girl wanted to be her, and you had Sarah Lumen, who was kind of like the girl next door. Very innocent, angelic, never had a boyfriend before until she spotted Mr. Josh Camacho. Josh Camacho, 19 years old, deadbeat dad to his toddler at the time. Who knows, he probably has a bunch of the babies by now. And um, he was of Mexican descent. He had the curly hair. He took pictures, you know, with the guns and weed smoking and just thug like little person little jit we'll call him thinking he was the shit mr bad boy well rachel knew josh camacho since kindergarten so they went way back uh sarah ludman you know what i mean she was in high school at the time when she met josh camacho she was in her senior year uh rachel had that was sarah i'm sorry did i say rachel i'm sorry guys sarah was in um, high school at the time when she met Josh and she was in her senior year. Rachel had actually uh, dropped out of school. She got her own apartment. She worked at Applebee's. She was very independent compared to Sarah who still lived at home with her mom and was such a daddy's girl. By the way, she was their only child at the time. I'm not sure if they had more children, but we're just going on for what it was in 2009. Okay, now continuing on with this story. And I was like waiting for like my backup phone to charge up so I could like 
double check my, my results, but you know what? We're just winging it. Y'all wanted to see it. You guys like my other crime stories, and I feel pretty confident about this. Let's get back in. Okay, so um, basically, Rachel was dating Josh. Rachel was with Josh. They were together um, off and on. You know, they make up, break up, make up, break up. Very poisonous relationship. The friends were, see, Rachel never even look, looked at Josh. They went to kindergarten. They knew each other all throughout the years, and they didn't start dating until they went to high school. Well, Rachel dropped out. So basically what I'm saying is, is that Rachel and Josh had a very long history you know what I mean? Kind of like me and my ex compared to, you know, but we're not going into that. Let's get back to the story, Samantha. <laughs> so Sarah walked into a Chick-fil-A and she was just sprung on Josh. Josh smelled like French fries. Yeah, they said that in the <laughs> in the crime story. Um, she's, he smelled like French fries and she was sprung. That was it. He winked at her. She never had a boyfriend before, like I said, guys, and she was completely smitten. A couple of months went by and Josh decided, you know what, I like both these girls. I have an independent chick, Rachel, who had her own apartment and then I have this down to earth girl who's still a daddy's girl who was Rachel. Uh, Sarah. La uh, la la. Rachel blonde, Sarah brunette. Alright, we're getting there people, we're getting there. Josh Camacho, little jug jitterbug thug. Okay, so Sarah found out that Rachel was in existence through MySpace. Yeah, you guys remember MySpace, right? That was before Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these other things. It was MySpace, okay? And you could do some damage. Hell, you could do damage now on Facebook. I know I have. And that's a problem, and that's my warning for this video. I need you guys all to heed warning that our words, we, ba -ba 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 -ba, we pop off at the mouth not knowing that they could come back to damage us in the end or right then and there. So, like I said, uh, Sarah found out about Rachel, was enraged, but she didn't decide to take it out on Josh. She decided to take it out on Rachel. And it was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for him. I'm gonna show him that he needs me instead of her. Basically would call Rachel all these names. Um, Sarah would say that Rachel was, you know, oh, you're a dumb dropout, you're stupid. And Rachel would come back with, oh, you're fat and ugly. It was just a big social media war. Was MySpace considered social? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay, so anyways, basically, uh, so Josh decided, you know what, I'm just gonna date both of them. And try to keep them both happy only it made it worse and Rachel would post that she's with Josh and Sarah would see it and go insane or Josh would leave Rachel and go be with Sarah and Sarah would post a picture of them too and Rachel would go insane and they were calling each other on their phones leaving voicemails going back and forth on MySpace honestly I wish that their friends back then would have seen this or even their family and been like look guys Something bad's going to happen. Just stop while you're ahead. No good can come out of this. And like I said, this went on for almost eight to nine months of back and forth miss. And this guy, he, this whole time is little Mr. Player Player. And he tells these women, you want me? Fight for me. Uh, sorry, boo. My life ain't worth no man. Sorry. So... Sarah would go to Rachel's job and um, one night there was because she worked at Applebee's there was um, karaoke she went there with her girlfriends and she would sing the song it's about to be a girl fight and basically you know intimidate her leave messages you know on her voicemail Rachel would do the same but it was really mo mainly Sarah Sarah this 18 year old she was like this is gonna be my man I'm gonna fight with him fight for him you're not gonna have him and Josh really didn't see it that way. He wanted both. And they both just dumb, dumb bunnies, dumb duckies. And I've been there before, like I said, too. They both just, they dealt with it. Instead of, you know, really sitting down and being like, well, if this guy doesn't care about how I feel about him messing with this girl, then why should I be with you? Just, you know. But again, we don't think about that because we're in young love, puppy love. Ugh, so... The love triangle. The love triangle, like I said, it went on and on until it turned deadly. Now, voicemails, like I said, kept coming back up. They were leaving voicemails, you know, oh, I'm going to fucking uh, destroy you. I'm going to fucking murder you. That came from Rachel. She might have not meant it at the time saying it to Sarah, but like I said, it's going to come back to haunt her. 
Sarah will leave messages on Rachel's, you know, oh, you messing with the wrong women, woman, bitch, and this is my man, and, you know, all this stuff. So, whoo, one fateful night. Let me see if I covered all the bases. Hold on. Oh, but friends of Rachel also was like, I don't see, I don't know what you're seeing, Josh. You know good can come out of this, and she just still wanted to be with him. And so, one night... Ra um Rachel was I don't I think she was with Josh she was with Josh and he left to go home and went to his house to play video games and Sarah decided to go over there and be with him and, and, and play video games with his sister and a couple of his friends and um I'm trying to, oh I remember now okay Rachel was at the house and Sarah comes to her house banging on her door open up bitch open up bitch Rachel got scared ran into the kitchen grabbed a knife out of the kitchen drawer just a regular knife kitchen knife and put it in her purse she went to open the door and Sarah was already gone Sarah had gone to leave to go be with Josh and play video games and again this was April 12 2009 and so this was like all around like seven o'clock nine o'clock and Rachel texts uh, Josh and says oh I see why you're not answering the phone you're with her because she had posted a, a, a I guess a, a picture or a video or something of her and Josh playing the video games that's what Rachel did on I'm sorry that's what Sarah did on you guys try to do these crime stories they're not easy <laughs> off the top of your head that's why Sarah posted so that Rachel could see that they are together and so uh, Josh said, yeah, that's right. I'm going to be with Sarah. I don't want to be with you no more. Leave me alone. Josh said that to Rachel. And instead of Rachel being like, well, damn, you don't care about me. No. She texts back, oh, I'll just be there when she leaves. Sarah sees, sees this and becomes enraged. But dad, her daddy, texted her and said, Rachel, ugh, Sarah, Sarah, come home. You know, you're about to be at curfew. Come on, come home. So she decided that she was going to go get something to eat real quick with Josh's sister. And then she was going to drop Josh's sister off and go back home. So on the way to go on and get something to eat, a friend. I This is the part that confuses me. If they met at like a stop sign or they met at like, I'm not sure if it was a phone, a text message. I'm not sure what it is, honestly. I can look it up and put it in the comments below. But I want you guys also to check out the story. I'm going to leave the link to that video in the comments down below. Well, in the description box below. And basically, a friend gives Sarah a tip that Rachel is up the street at Javier's house. Javier is Rachel's old ex-boyfriend. And basically, she went there because she didn't want to be alone because she lives at her apartment by herself. And she was scared, especially with the girls banging on her door. So I believe Rachel was sitting on her car, smoking a cigarette, talking to Javier and Javier's friend. And Sarah decides to do a 180 in her van and takes off to go confront Rachel. I'm, this is the part again that becomes fuzzy. Rachel had the knife in her hand already or maybe it was in her pocket or what because I heard she put it in her purse so how the knife became visible I'm not sure I just know that Sarah come flying out of the vehicle throwing fists boom 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 strict strict struck Rachel three times in the head and that is when Rachel either like I said it was in her back pocket it was on her maybe she had her purse on her I'm not sure she grabs the knife and starts swinging back she says she doesn't even remember having the knife in her hand and one pierced her shoulder the one stab boom pierced her shoulder and the second straight to the chest to her heart Sarah immediately falls back falls backwards because you can see the pictures of her white flip-flop she had at the time blood is pouring everywhere and in one last attempt she crawls to her van to make one last phone call did she call her dad did she call her mom she calls Josh she calls Josh to tell him what happened and it hurts that's all she was able to say before she fell back and passed out Friends of Rachel are astonished. The, the guys are like, why did you do that? The girls that were with her at the time, they're freaking out. Josh calls Sarah's dad. They rush to the scene. Friends are rushing to the scene. And everybody is like screaming at Rachel. Why did you do this? I can't believe you did this. This whole time, Rachel is sitting on the side of the sidewalk, smoking a cigarette. She had already thrown the knife up on the roof of the neighbor's house. And she's calm, cool, and collected while Sarah lies bleeding to death in the street. Um, 
This all occurs around 11 o'clock at night. Sarah is pronounced dead at 2.30 in the morning the next day. I... When I heard this story, I was like, oh my god. Like, this girl, did she mean to do it? Was it an accident? Was it just protection? Was she self-defensing herself? Is that a word? Self-defensing? I, I was blown away. I was shocked. Okay? So, at this time... It's time to take Rachel down for questioning. Rachel does not know that Sarah is dead yet. The cops are questioning her. They're telling her everything. They're saying, you know, reenact, you know, having the knife. Why did you do it? Rachel's crying. I just wanted it to stop. I just wanted her to leave me alone. I didn't, you know, I didn't mean to stab her. She honestly, she honestly thought she only stabbed her in the shoulder. She didn't know she got it the second time in the heart. And she's sitting there being questioned by a good cop, bad cop. And then they tell her, well, there's something you need to know. Sarah is dead and Rachel starts bawling her eyes out she's crying in her arms she has her head down she's in disbelief that this girl is dead and she says and this is to me kind of savage like and just in a way inhumane she tells the cop I just wanted her to stop following me and the cop says well she can't follow you anymore she's dead I was like Oof, ouch damn and so the trial goes on that's one thing that i don't have the answers for of when the trial went on when the date was the trial to be set but like i said i will look it up and let you know in a future video i guess this phone is dead because it ain't turning on but um i'll put it down in the comments below like i said trial begins and self-defense 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 that is what is playing out here josh comes he's in the stand he says he wasn't neither of those girls' his boyfriend. I was blown away. So, you didn't really care about Sarah, who's now dead because of you. And you didn't even care about Rachel, whose now life is about to be over because of you. Insensitive prick bastard. So, I was blown by that. And then, the voice messages. The voice messages that put the final fate in Rachel's coffin. That sealed it once and for all. It was like Sarah made her last attempt to get revenge. To basically just put it out there. They, they had Sarah's phone. And she had saved Rachel's messages. And Rachel says, I have messages too. I just erased them. Sarah saved hers. And the message said, you think that I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can maybe try to get the video clip in this video. I'm not sure. I really want you to hear it. But she's something like, you think you're smart. You have no idea who you're fucking with. I'm going to fucking murder you. I promise you, Sarah, I'm going to fucking murder you. Even though those were just words. Even though the girl didn't even have a criminal history background. Nothing at all. Those words sealed her fate. 27 years in prison she was 19 at the time she's still in prison i am just both these lives both these girls lives are over in more the ways than one one because of she's in prison for life basically i mean all her life is almost gone you know what i mean well, she's 27 now but still that's her life and you have Sarah, who's dead, who lost her life so young, and Josh. Did he even go to Sarah's funeral? No. Did he even go see Rachel in prison? No. He decided just to live his happy, happy life and not even give a care in the world for two girls that fought over him. Because remember, he told them want me fight for me they did josh and now that both their lives are over congratulations um inside edition i'm not sure if it was inside edition or chris hansen it was one of those crime you know stories reporters went to go talk to josh and he was not home at the time and the mother basically slammed the door in their face so no charges were able to be pressed upon josh trust me they tried and there was nothing they could do. I mean, he didn't tell Sarah to get killed. And he didn't tell Rachel to kill her. 
So what can you do? But I just wanted to know, I just want to let you guys know that it, it's so, life is so short and I've been there, I've done it. So you guys want to hear my story? Let's begin. I talk about my ex a lot on Facebook. Um, his name's Patrick, and we were together off and on for almost nine years. I gave this guy nine years of my life to get right. His ex from high school, I guess they were high school sweethearts that turned deadly uh, or dangerous, I should say, because they both had to put restraining orders on each other, came back into the picture right when I started dating Patrick. I started dating Patrick in 2000 and 2010 when I first moved here and we only separated last year it was a long time I mean like we were off and on off and on off and on but we were together straight for three and a half years and basically the girl came to the picture and she was like trying to be messy and I was like either you handle it or I will and so I gave him one time and she called again and this time she was lying saying oh he was with me last night and you know us females will say anything to get a rise out of females you know to try to get it to break up and uh basically i told her she's a liar and i you know my words were basically you call us again and i'll make sure you do get ghost so i am sending out a verbal threat you know at the time i'm not thinking nothing of it threats are serious guys threats words be careful with everything you say so we, you know, she disappears. I guess she's in some relationship with some guy in Tallahassee. Basically, I don't know. And then 2014 hits. And she's back in the picture. My ex, he's not caring how I feel. He's disrespectful. He's basically just, oh, we're friends, we're friends, we're friends. No. I don't want you to be friends with this girl. I feel like our lives will never be the same again. Not to mention, this girl started working at the job where we work at, only she was on the other side of the fence. Me and him worked inside of the fence. And I was like, Patrick, please, like, do something. He didn't do nothing. And so I kicked his ass out the house. But before that, I met with her, with uh, Jocelyn, and we could have, you know, got shot, stabbed, killed right then and there, confronting each other. You know, I did it in Winn-Dixie parking lot because I didn't want to be, she wanted to come to my house. And I was like, oh, no, you're not coming to my house. But... I mean, something bad could have happened right then and there. And she's, you know, telling me, oh, I'm sleeping with him and I could be pregnant and all this stuff and everything. Why didn't I just leave Patrick then? Why? Why do we just, why do we stay? Why do we stay when there's a million, million men out there? Why do we stay? Dumb, dumb love and dumb. I'll go back to dumb. So, basically, we break up. And, uh, you know, I let her have him, but he keeps on telling me, oh, he doesn't love her. Like, you know, like he loves me and he wants to be with me. You know, you know, you guys, you guys have that way with words. And, um, I believed him, you know, put my life on hold. Basically, I was the side chick. It's so embarrassing to admit, but it's sad, but true. And I dealt with this off and on. Now, I had my relationships too now, but, you know, my heart belonged to him at the time. So, we'll fast forward because she gets pregnant and they end up having a son together. He calls me. He calls me. Ten minutes after she gives birth. He calls me. I'm outside the hospital. She just had the baby, but I can't stop thinking of you. I love you. I want you. I want to be with you. Da, 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 da. Why are you calling me? You just had a baby. Go back there and be with your baby. Go be with your baby and baby mama. Go. Bye. Goodbye. I wish I would have stayed that strong, but he always had a hold on me somehow, some way. And uh, basically, it came down to me, you know, getting uh, threatening messages, you know, us going back and forth on Facebook, you know, oh, we did this and you did this and posting pictures of each other and all this stuff. I told this girl, listen to me, I told her before all this even happened. Me and him are a strong unit, and nothing, and nothing you're going to do is going to break that. I kept that word until I finally pulled the plug. 
you know, someone has to eventually pull the plug. Someone has to eventually say, enough is enough. This is just, this is dangerous in love. This is not healthy. And that's what me and my ex were not healthy for each other. So this now is, we'll go three years ago. I'm going to say about three years ago, kind of, sort of. 2016, I get engaged to be married. And it's just, it's sweet, it's nice, you know, guy was very sweet. My ex and I, after we went to court and he lost his battle because his dumbass tried to uh, get me for a restraining order and I say I was dangerous to him and so did the girl. Oh God, guys, it's a whole nother story for another day. But it, we, yeah, we went to court and I won and they both look like idiots and she was like in the courtroom, oh my God, I can't believe you. Cause I mean like, duh, I told you I wasn't lying. He's been seeing you, seeing me behind your back the whole time. And uh, I had text messages. I read everything verbatim that he texted me. It was crazy. Like, you guys want to hear that story? Put it down in the comments below and I will make another video on that. But, um, yeah, it was it was damaging to me. I got engaged. I was really happy. This guy was really awesome. And then my ex got word of it because he was still kind of still working at the job. But he, he went off to do truck driving as well. And he was like, oh, you're engaged to be married. And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, and I'm really happy for you and the girl. You know, I'm glad you guys can make it work after all the drama and stuff. Like, I was sincere. And I thought he was sincere. But apparently the girl, like, just was taking his money. Wasn't giving him no mind while he was on the road. So my... My little words, my little, you know, how you doing? Are you okay? Da, da, da. You know, it built a bond. And we stuck like glue again. And he decided he was going to come back in town. And he wanted to end my engagement, us get back together. He asked me to marry him. And it was going to be us back together again. I can't believe I even did it. Kick the guy out that I just got this house with. This house that I am filming in right now. Kick the guy out. His children had to leave. That's just heartbreaking to me. They weren't officially moved in yet because um, he was dealing with some financial problems. But everything was going according to plan. And then um, his ex-wife, she was kind of being a little messy. But everything was fine after that. And um, basically, I just did it. And Patrick moved back in town. And now, mind you... This girl literally lived right around the corner from where I'm living right now. She just moved out like last month, guys. I kid you not. Well, like July. She moved out at the end of July. And um, I was like, oh, we're in August still. Yeah, last month. And so I just was like, wow, like how close for comfort we were to each other. And um, so Patrick moved in, moved all the stuff out of her house straight to my house. She got word of it. She was putting death threats and she destroyed his computer and just, it was just crazy. My mom put the announcement on Facebook. We were getting married. The girl went loco, went loco crazy bananas. Um, my ex had lost his job. So then it was like me, I was having to take care of him. And then like, we were literally getting stopped. Like she basically, well, let's see. I put a no trespassing warrant on her because she said she was gonna blow up my car with my son and Patrick in it. And then four months down the road, she tried to put a no trespassing warrant on me. And of course I didn't work. And it was just crazy, the threats and going back and forth and confronting each other at Walmart and just all this stuff that could have turned so deadly. Either one of us could have just easily went and got a gun and just was like, I'm over it, boom. Or stab or anything, you know? And reading this story really was like, damn. Now, I heard this story before I even knew Patrick. So, coming back into this, I was like, holy shit. I kind of dealt with the same thing. And, um, whew. It was a long journey. I was in therapy three different occasions. And my last therapist, the last time I went last year, she said, when your heart is ready to agree with your brain you will finally be able to let go finally be able to let go and i did i finally said it i finally did it i said enough was enough like holy shit is it ever gonna end this girl has a baby with him now so clearly she's not giving up and i'm just like i don't need this and he was lazy, he was a liar, he was manipulative, he was sneaky. Oh my God. And I mean, 
He just kept going back and forth. Up the road, down the road. Up the road, down the road. When is enough is enough. So after finally like all this stuff subsided with me and her, we were back together. I cannot believe I took him back after all that bullshit. And we got back together. And we, try, we tried to do it one last try. He made it to four and a half months. And I caught him lying. He was talking to some lesbian behind my back. He's a hoe and he can't help it. Now, now, I think he finally got it through his head. I think he finally, finally decided, like, I want to be good. I think he did. I'm not sure. Because we don't talk like that anymore. It's, we try to, we said we would always be friends. We would always be close. But you just can't. Sorry, guys. You can't be friends with your ex. Especially an ex that you've been with for more than five years. It's just not possible. It's not. There will always be the feelings or that question or that, you know, oh, you remember this or you remember that and you go down memory lane and then it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. So I finally said enough was enough. I let go. I moved on. And um, I last time I saw him was actually 4th of July. He's the person that took me to the bus so that I could get on my bus to go to Stephanie's house in Louisiana and I um, was very grateful it's 4th of July guys let me just tell you what I dealt with as I'm getting in my car it's not even my car it's his friend's car as we're getting in the car and we're about to pull out of my driveway out of the neighborhood drop because you go you, you drive past down I'm up like at an alkaline and you drop down and you go out to the neighborhood past the pool as soon as we get to the end of that alkaline Oh my god. She's right there in front of her house checking the mail or something. She sees his friend's car and immediately takes off. Patrick's like, drive, drive, telling the guy go. And I'm like in the back seat, like, oh my god. This is why I left you. <laughs> this is why this is never gonna happen with us ever in life because of this right here. She chased us all the way down to the park okay and she had the kid her kid in the car and i couldn't believe it i just couldn't believe it i was like smith you're about to go on vacation you're about to get on vacation you're about to be in louisiana soup like just just breathe girl like don't even go off on him nothing we she finally stops she gives up she's calling him the whole time he's like he's like what are you talking about? Because he told her he was going to be with this guy this day, this softball friend, his cousin. And he, he, she's like, he's, he's like, so-and-so picked somebody up. I don't know who we picked up. I can't help that. And I'm like, oh. I'm so just relieved. I don't have to listen to the lies and the bullshit anymore. Because I, let me tell you, my ex could lie like a rug. He could lie. It was the worst. I had to be back in 2010 for other drama, but no, 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 no. That's just embarrassing. All right, guys. I hope we just picked up where I left off. Like I said, my ex, he could lie like a rug. He was, it was just embarrassing the lies he's ever given me. But this video is running long, so let me try to cut it short because we kind of went way off topic here. We were talking about Rachel Wade and Sarah Ludman and Josh Camacho and their love triangle. I just want to tell you guys that I have definitely dealt with it as well. And you guys clearly just see how. <laughs> so uh, she finally, like I said, the girl, the baby mama finally gave up. We got to the gas station and I said... I, I was behind him in the passenger seat. But he was in the passenger seat. I was behind him. I got next to his ear and I said, Patrick... Patrick, for the love of God, please, please just admit you're with this girl. Please just admit that you guys are together. Please. He's like, Samantha, I told you, I would never go back down that road. I'm like, okay, whatever, Patrick. I'm about to be in the bus station. I don't even care. Like, just get me the hell out of here. I, I, don't, I, I don't even care. Like, seriously, it's so sad. Like, if you love this girl and you're going to be with her, which honestly, do I think he loves her? Maybe, but is he in love? Hell no. And he is just, he's settling because he wasn't able to be a father to his first child. And why? Because he was a cheater and liar then. That's, like I said, we go way back. It goes way back, okay? Like, I moved here in 2010, guys, and I finally just left him alone last 
the last time we were to was together um I think May we went out to eat or something or whatever and I looked him in the eyes and I told him that I don't I'm not in love with you anymore like we were sitting across from the table from each other and I was like I'm not in love with you anymore and he was like whoa it might have been April I'm not sure it was either April or May I'm not sure but either way the last time I saw him was on the 4th of July and I don't know what he's doing and I don't care he's living his life and like I said I finally was able to finally let go and say enough was enough so in if you've not gotten anything out of this story just know no man is worth your stress your aggravation and your life it's not worth it and if he really loved you he wouldn't put you through that shit he would not that's not love that's lust that's dangerously in love lust so Sarah rest in peace baby girl I'm sure you're up in heaven and you are I mean you was taken from us so soon 18 years old you know what I mean she never got to get married she only had one relationship she didn't get to graduate high school you know like it's so sad Rachel she's in prison you know I think she's gonna go up for appeal soon um, and, um, you know, I, I wish her the best and I hope that when she does leave that she's able to start her life all over again in some sort of way, but she will always have that guilt. She will always have that. I took a life. Like that's something you'll never be able to forget. You took somebody else's life and Josh, <laughs> who knows where the hell he's at? Who even knows if he's alive or kicking or whatever. Probably got three other baby mamas. Who knows? But just know that love yourself first don't deal with bullshit and drama and find you the man that's gonna love you unconditionally who puts him puts you before he puts himself Cause that's what I did with my ex I knew I loved that boy unconditionally because I let him go so many times because I cared about his happiness more than mine but he didn't do the same for me. And it finally, it finally clicked and was like, you deserve so much better, Sam. So there you go. Well, guys, I hope you enjoy these crime stories. I have another one coming up next weekend. I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Saturday crime stories with Samantha Sweets. Um, if you guys are interested in that, please make sure you like and love on this video. Comment down below any crime stories you want to see or hear me talk deep about. And uh, as always, guys, stay beautiful. Stay blessed. I'm Samantha Sweets. I love y'all. Bye.